What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over something fun, a requested episode on time dilation and some additional special effects when rounds are, are won or when the match is won. So this should be a nice and simple one, but it is going to add a bunch of flair to our game, and I'm going to just touch the surface, but what I show here today should show you everything you need to be able to accomplish this to, you know, make it however you see fit for your game. As different games do it differently. So we already had the match flow, of course, and that little mini series is pretty much complete within the series. We have rounds, we have matches with changeable number of rounds and that sort of thing. Uh, but we can do additional flair. Like I said, we can have extra sounds like a, a basically a death or defeat noise. We'd have time dilation when the match is won to make it a little bit more dramatic. These things are, again, small changes, but they can make a big difference. So take this for example now when i win this round the mutant is going to play a sound effect they actually have not ever played before you haven't heard before because it was not one i've used in the past okay and that's pretty simple being able to play a death sound or a unique sound when defeated as opposed to taking damage is pretty simple and something you can probably already do and let's take a look at what happens and how much of a difference it makes when we, you know, beat up our opponent. And there's time dilation. You can see how the impact felt like it had a lot more effect. It was a lot more meaningful and a lot more enjoyable. Now, if we actually were to, I guess I could have hit rematch, but if we actually were to uh, play this one more time. And we can do my favorite thing of all time that reminds me of Marvel vs. Capcom. And it's very simple, actually, but it's something that I, I love. And when I got this requested as a video, I was like, yes, I absolutely will do this because I'm very, very interested. So whenever you were to uppercut an opponent when they were defeated in a game like Marvel vs. Capcom, there's a ton of games that do it. That's just the one I'm most familiar with, so I keep using it. Uh, I have to do it a very specific way so that I get the health right. But you can do this very dramatic finish here. It makes all the difference in the world the death sound, the time dilation. Now, our combat flow is not completely done, so you see he actually has to stand up and then go to his death animation, which is an animation blueprint thing, so no big deal there. But basically today, we are going to be covering how we can add these, these little bits of flair to end of rounds and end of matches. They are different how we can do them, but they're both pretty simple, but it's going to be a fun episode, and you can take this to varying degrees of of depth so like you can make it really complex if you wanted to or you can make it really simple and just keep it like i have here but it is something that i thought was cool and again i'm happy to cover it so let's get into it we'll be quick today to get started we are going to go to our code as usual but before we do that this is episode 102 of the fighting game tutorial series we're very far along with very far still to go so don't worry there's plenty more to go, but if you want to get caught up and see how we've done everything to get to this point, then feel free to click this icon in the top right corner. Check out all the work we've done, all the tutorials we put out so far. That's the entire playlist of the fighting game tutorial series. All right. And yeah, we'll just hop right into it. So we want to do a few things here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to basically have a method we can use to trigger these end of round effects. So, excuse me, really the end of game effects or the end of round effects, either or will work. So if we go to our fighter template game mode, I had this function in here before called round one. And we actually ended up not using it too much because of the way we, we swap things around and uh, we, we basically aren't using the code function at all unless you did anything additional in the series. I was not using it. I left the function here, but we had removed all the code. Well, I am going to use round one here. Regardless of where our other round win logic is, we can have this here because basically at any point we want to perform special effects for the round winning, whether it be camera changing, you know, these special sound effects or anything like that, like the time dilation, we can do it here and we can keep it separate. It can be separate from the win logic uh it doesn't hurt to do this because maybe we don't want these effects in every single fight maybe there's different roles depending on the mode you're in so it doesn't hurt to keep these things separated 
So round one before was literally void round one with a player index. I've now changed the player index to be a fighter template character pointer. Uh, when I called it winning character and I said equal to null pointer by default. So what this means is uh, when we call this function, we can choose to pass in a character reference or a character object really. And then, uh, you know, we can perform different logic on it based on that if we want to. In this case, we won't be because we're just dilating time, slowing it down. But you could, you know, make the winning character glow or you could make them say a line at that moment or anything, really. So I've done this. I've added this as opposed to the player index. And then I made a new function. And it's a blueprint callable blueprint implementable event. And I call it trigger round win effects. And this is just so that I can go into my base game OBP and doing the logic I want in there. This is not necessary if you want to do it all in the code, but if you if there's anything you want to do in Blueprint, then having this additional function that we call from round one will accomplish that. Because the winning character could also be used in there, I did the same thing here where I added a fighter template character pointer. To do that, you do have to make sure that your fighter template character is in your game mode. However, if you've been following the series, we already have pointers for each player, player one and player two. So you already have that and you won't have to add that include. But if you're just watching this out of the blue um, and you haven't been following the series or yours is different from mine, make sure you do have the character class or the really the class that you are going to access objects from. So basically, make these two functions in the header file, and then you can go into the game mode CPP. And since the trigger round win effects is a blueprint implementable event, it means we can call it in the code, but we write all the logic that it's going to do in the blueprint. So we don't have to worry about setting it up in the code at all. We just have to figure out where we want to call it from. As I mentioned in the header file, really, I'm just doing this in case there's anything you want to do in the blueprint. So you don't need both of these functions. You could just have one or the other. But you know me. I like to have the code there uh, kind of as the parent to everything, the guide to everything. And then the blueprint kind of handles all the child classes and any additional logic. So the way this really works is I have the round one function here. I've updated the parameters to be the winning character. And then I just call trigger round win effects in this function and pass in the parameter. One other thing to note the reason I've set this to be null pointer as a start means we don't have to pass this a winning character. This could be useful if you have a draw. So if there's no winning character, you can assume that it is a draw, or maybe you could assume it was a timeout and you want to perform a different uh, function or different piece of logic because of that. You know, if the timer runs down, you might not want to do time dilation. Really, it doesn't make a ton of sense because it's not, you know, it, the time dilation is more for the dramatic effect. Same with the sound effects. So no pointer basically would mean there is not a winning character. We don't want to perform this logic. Okay. And that's pretty much it for the game mode. If we go into our fighter template character dot H let's, let's actually go to the CPP first and let's scroll down. I'm going to do the majority of the logic in the take damage function. Our take damage function is pretty big because it does check all the states for if you're blocking in like if it's high, mid, low, you know, overhead, all this stuff. Uh, and it, it, you do reduce damage if you're blocking. We do our hit stun frames in here. So all this stuff you see, there's a lot in here, but you should have almost all of it if you've been following the series. There's a quick rundown of everything that's in there. We're only going to really update three things in this function. So don't worry about it too much. We're not making a bunch of changes. Now, in take damage, really what I'm trying to do here is I want to have a way to, you know, perhaps play a death sound when they're defeated every round. You could also do this only when the match is over as well if you'd like. I'm just giving you a range of options you can use for your game. So let's say every time the character is defeated, you know, at the end of the round, we may want to play an additional sound or an additional effect. Now, to do that, there's a very simple method we can use which is basically in the take damage function, I have is defeated from hit I've added as a Boolean. Before we were just checking if player health is less than uh, 0.00F at the bottom of this function right here, actually. Line 1003 is actually where I was checking it before. 
But uh, since we're going to be using this this check, if player health has less than zero many times over, or well, actually about three or four times throughout this function, then I'm just going to make a Boolean and we can check the Boolean. It's going to be that simple. So when we go to player damage effects, I also play the sound effect for it as we set up in the episode with the visual effects. So the way it works is we play the damage effects and we grab from our sound array for any of the damage sounds and we were to play it. Okay, we were grabbing randomly and playing it. Now I've set up a special damage sound in here that is the death, the death noise and we play that instead. The way I know which sound to play is based off this boolean is finishing blow, which we have to pass in to our play damage effects, and it's the same with the play block effects functions that we have in our take damage function. Okay? That variable that we're passing in is going to be the result of is defeated from hit. So let's go over it all at once. Let's go to our template character.h now. And let's look at these two events that we had. Again, they were called play damage effects and play block effects. They were both blueprint implementable events. And they were uh, events that we made when we went over the visual effect episodes. So before they just were uh, their events and they had a hit location. So we knew where to spawn the VFX. But now we also have bull is finishing blow. And I've set it to be false by default. So we can always assume that it's false if we want. If we want to trigger this anywhere else. Call it from other functions or things like that. And now you won't have to update these if you don't want. Like for example, since we set it to be false by default. If you just call play damage effects with hit location. Ignoring everything after this then it would still work, but it would never go into the true, you know, it would never return a true value for is finishing blow. And so if we want to do additional logic, as I do, we just have to pass it a Boolean. So we set up this Boolean is defeated from hit at the top of take damage. So it resets every time the character takes damage. After taking damage, player health minus equals damage amount, then we check to see if the player health is less than 0.00F. If it is, that means they've been defeated from that hit. So if they are defeated from the hit, we want to play the damage effects as usual. But now we want to make sure that we pass in this Boolean is defeated from hit. That way we know what sound effect to play. And in a lot of cases, uh, games will also play a different visual effect. Or they may play a flashy UI thing to say that they've been defeated. This is important because, yes, we have the logic to update, you know, round counts and things when a round is over. However, some, you know, the order of these things is important. Something like the death sound or the time dilation really should be done as soon as the hit occurs to make it more dramatic and make it flow. We want to make sure these occur at the right time. This is the right time to do it. Okay. And really, it's very simple at this point. This goes the same for blocking. So I do the same check after the, the player health has been reduced by the, the damage that they took from the block. So basically the chip damage still. And if the player health is less than zero, is defeated from hit is true. Remember, it defaults the false up here. So if they're not, it'll just be false when it gets passed in. But if it is true, meaning they've been defeated, regardless if they were blocking or not, when we play block effects, we also pass in is defeated from hit. Okay. We'll go over the blueprint events in a second and what, what I had to change about them. But the last point, we're going to use it, and this is not required. But before this if statement, where we were setting the player health to zero and saying the other player won the round, this was if player health is less than 0.00F. Just to keep things nice and clean, because I didn't want the same if statement three times, I just checked if is defeated from hit. But you don't have to do that. It's up to you. Same, uh, same thing here. You could actually check if not defeated from hit and player health less than 0.5. Up to you. Completely up to your personal preference. Just showing you some additional things that you could do. Okay. And now we also have this win round function in our character. And it determines what the character should do and uh, who we should notify when a character has won the round. So in this case... Um, I want to actually trigger the round win effects like the time dilation when this function gets called. 
It doesn't have to be directly on the hit. It can be after all the calculations for the damage have been done. And uh, when we get into combo counters, like that should be handled first. That way we have that updated number on the screen. But we have this win round function. And previously, it looked like this minus this part in the middle. So if you've been following the series, you'll notice everything in this function is the same as it was, except for the highlighted section I have here. What we're going to do is call our round one function that we have in our game mode that we were working with right here. Because this is how we're going to do our time dilation. Really, it should be game one effects, to be honest, because that's where we're using it. But you could do round one here. So to avoid confusion, basically call whatever logic you want to call when you've won a round here. If you want it to be when you've only won the game, like I do in this case, then here's how I do it. First of all, I get my game mode to make sure that uh, we have the right game mode and I can actually perform this function. Otherwise, it would crash, so we don't want to do that. The way you do this is you check it. If auto game mode means it's going to make a variable type of a fighter template game mode, and then it's going to call it game mode. And this value is going to get set to get world gate, uh, get auth game mode. And it's going to cast that to a fighter template game mode. If this succeeds, game mode will now have a reference to, well, it'll be a reference to the world's game mode, which means we can call the functions on it that we have in our fighter template game mode class. Now, if you want this to occur every time a round is won, you don't have to do this additional check here. However, I wanted the time dilation only to occur when the match was won, so I do this additional check. Because I changed it and I didn't change the name, I realized this could be a little bit confusing. So to avoid confusion, we can change this to be match one. Okay. So instead of round one in the game mode, I'm calling it match one because that's how I'm using it. Apologies for the confusion there. And instead of uh, trigger round win event win effects, if you want, trigger match win effects as well. Again, sorry for the conf uh, the confusion. Just when I was running through this, doing the voiceover, I kind of realized that that actually sounds better. And let's just update this one final time. Okay, so once we have our game mode, what we need to do is actually check if we only want to do this when the game is won. We need to check if the number of rounds that the player has won is equal to the number of rounds required to win to finish the match. So our game mode has always had this round uh, one function since the match flow logic. It's called num rounds. And all I do is I check if the round's won. This is a character variable. Sorry if I could find it. Rounds won. The amount of rounds won by the character. So we check if rounds won by this character equals equals the game mode uh, num rounds. So, you know, if we, if we win this round and we're our number of rounds that we won are equal to the number of rounds in the game mode, we know for a fact that this character is going to win the game. So we want to trigger the match one logic. Now, it is important that if you are going to do it this exact way that I'm doing it, you do have to add the rounds one first. Because otherwise, you will be one round short. So you can't do this above the rounds one logic you have to add the round first. Alternatively, just check and see if the rounds one plus one is equal to this value. Okay. And now we're calling game mode match one and we're passing in this because match one takes in a fighter template character pointer. So we're saying this is the character that won the match. Simple enough. Now, you notice that you could do this on win match as well. Like, we have a function called win match. You're like, why aren't you doing it here? 
So remember what I said, it's all about the timing. Win match is literally what gets happened when the character is about to go into their uh, victory animation. Because of that, we don't want the time dilation to occur here. We want it to occur as soon as the round is won. Just it happens to be when it's the last round that is won. So this is all about the timing. You can move it wherever you like. This is where I like it to be, and this is why I set it up the way I did. Okay, now let's go out of the code, and let's, let's relaunch Unreal. And when it loads, I'll show you what we do in the blueprint to finalize this logic. All right. And now we are back into Unreal. So let's go into our blueprints. And specifically, we need our base character BP, as well as our uh, base game mode BP, or default game mode BP, whatever you called them. I do need to replace my event now that we have changed the name. So it will be trigger uh, match win effects. Whoops, not the function though. We need the event, just like this. Okay, so default game mode BP and base character BP. Let's start with the base character because that one's, uh, I mean, they're both simple, but this one is building on existing logic that we already have. So we have our play damage effects and our play block effects. And I showed you earlier what they looked like, but just to give you a recap, so we had this event, we had this logic here. So basically it got a random integer and then grabbed the uh, sound element from this sound cue array and then played that sound. Then we spawned an emitter of the, the damage, uh, you know, the particle effect for taking damage right there. All this stuff is new. Now the block effects is exactly the same, except for the emitter that gets spawned currently. You could do different sounds or whatever, but currently we don't. So this is actually the exact same logic. So in both of them, we're going to add the same stuff. We now have this is finishing blow boolean. You can drag off of that and bring it into a branch. Now, if it is false, it is not a finishing blow. We're going to do the same logic we've always done. So you don't even have to change anything with the logic you have in there. Just drag the false from the branch into this and then bring it to the emitter. It's the true case that we have to do something else for. So the way I've thought of it in my head, and there's literally hundreds of ways you could do this, probably more is that I will make my last element in my damage sounds array or my block sounds array or whatever it is that I want to have the death sound. You could make a separate array for it. You could have a, a reference to that specific sound. Doesn't really matter how you want to do it. Just basically for all characters, you should have a method to know what sound you want to play when the character is defeated. For me, it's going to be the last element in my damage sounds array. So, simply enough, I go to my damage sounds array that I have here. I add a new element. I add my death sound. In this case, I make it the last element. So all I have to do to grab it is I get my damage sounds variable, my array here. I get the length, which is the, uh, the length returns the number of actual elements in the array. So there are four elements in this array, but it is 0, 1, 2, and 3. So I have to subtract 1 from it integer minus integer and then get if i drag off the damage sounds and type get you can get a copy and pass in this return as the index you can see that's what i'm doing with these four nodes right here then all i do is i play sound 2d because that's the sound i want to play and then i still do the the emitter you could do something different here if you want but for me i think the standard damage emitter we have is good you can copy that logic and do the exact same thing for the block. If you do have different sound effects for the block specifically, which you probably should, just to make it a little bit nicer and more unique, then feel free to use block sounds instead of damage sounds, but really it's the same strat. Okay. Very simple, but it can make a world of difference. Now let's go into our default game mode BP, and this is going to be again very, very simple, very hard coded. We're just, I'm just giving you an example of what we can do here. So here's our event trigger match win effects. This is what happens when the final blow has been dealt on the final round of a match. So what I've opted to do is set global time dilation to 0.2, meaning it will run at 0.2 of the standard speed or one fifth of the standard speed. Then I've given it a delay. Now, 
delay is in seconds and it does factor in time dilation. So a delay, so remember our time dilation right now is currently one fifth the normal speed. So if we had a duration of one second, it would take five times as long to finish this delay. It would take five seconds to finish the delay. So in the example given, we have one fifth the current, uh, the standard time dilation in the world and I'm giving it a delay of 0.5. Well, multiplying that by 0.5, or excuse me, multiplying that by five means th this delay will take 2.5 seconds to complete. And then I reset the global time dilation 1.0. This is again, entirely up to you. Feel free to change it. These are just hard coded values I've chosen to make it fun and interesting to, to defeat an opponent. There's no rules here, no real game development methods. There are game design methods to show you what would be fun for the player and things like that. But this is entirely up to you how you want to handle this and what you want to do with these in these scenarios. Now, one thing we don't use is our winning character pointer that we passed into this event. So you're aware it is this guy right here. If you do want to use that, uh, like I said, you can check and make sure you can do not equal exclamation mark equal, and you could do null pointer. You could do uh, is valid. Sorry, is valid. And if it's not valid, then you don't do any of this. So basically, only if it's valid do you do this. Because if there's no winning character, remember, it could be a draw. Maybe you don't want to do time dilation for that. Or time could have run out, which, yes, a character or a player may win the match, but they didn't deal a final blow, so we don't need to do time dilation just because match, the match time ran out. So you can set it up like this if you'd like, and that would mean that only if we pass it a winning character does it do this logic. But, yeah, guys, that's honestly pretty much it. This is a simple episode. It was a requested episode. But I just wanted to show off these different effects we can have that make a big change in our game. And now you should have the ability to kind of do them at any point you want. So it's up to you how you want to use them in the future. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Hope you go crazy with them. Show me what you thought of to do or some other methods that you've seen using these end of match and end of round techniques i think my favorite as i've mentioned earlier is definitely the um the like launcher into the death because it's just so satisfying to watch them get defeated in slow motion with that that death sound but like I said, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so, uh, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. In the next few episodes, I finally completed the next part of the Capsule Collider episode. So we're going to pump that out. And so you can uh, make yeah the collisions of the characters and the push boxes more accurate to true fighting games and, you know, more advanced fighting games like you probably played. Also... We're going to get working on combat flow again because our input buffer is almost done. At this point, I mainly want to focus on the controller feel and those sorts of scenarios because they are different. Like a quarter circle on a controller needs to be able to work. It's a very commonly used command and just having that full control of the joystick in general needs to work. So those are some things you can look forward to in the very near future. I want to give a huge shout out to all my Patreon members and my YouTube membership subscribers. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support myself and the series. It really, really helps me, and I also really appreciate it. If you had any issues with this episode or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I'd be happy to give you free assistance and just welcome you into the community. It'll be fun. Anyway, guys, that's all I got. So thanks again, I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.